okay yeah. so and members of the forum all uh, young indian anthropologists ladies and gentlemen today is a very special day in the history of our forum we are organizing this uh, young anthropologist webinar series titled my vision and roadmaps for anthropology in india in honor of our beloved professor let vinay kumar srivastav a legendary figure and a luminary in anthropology in india it gives us a great feeling to meet all his family members in this virtual platform today is national youth day government of india declared this day as national youth day way back in 1984 and we have been celebrating this as day as yuva divas since 1985 yuva divas uh, is celebrated to encourage the youth in the country to become better citizen better person and achieve an honorable life by contributing to the uh, development process in the country it is observed in on you know it is observed in honor of the birth anniversary of uh, swami ji swami vivekananda we all know his speech the speech that he delivered uh, in chicago way back in 1893 and uh, just i would like to you know quote one line uh, uh, and share his thought we are what our thought have made us so take care about what you think words are secondary thoughts live and they travel far and this was uh, a quote of uh, swami uh, vivekanand so all along professor vinay kumar srivastav was a source of inspiration for many young anthropologists in the country i really admire the way he used to encourage and motivate the youngster professor srivastav had a deep conviction that the future of anthropology in india rest in the hands of the young anthropologists that is why we are organizing this webinar in honor of professor vinay kumar srivastav to inspire the young anthropologist in india this will continue for four days uh, today is the first day and it will continue till 15 12 13 14 15 15 and uh, may i request all of you to use social media your social media network to give wider coverage to this program and uh, now may i request our special guest professor rumkum srivastav to declare this young anthropologist webinar series open on this special day of uh, yuva divas and speak something to the members of the forum especially to our youngster young anthropologist to make them feel motivated and inspired professor rumkum srivastav thank you very much and good evening and uh, and youth day celebrations and greetings uh, to all old and young here i would like to first uh, speak about the title of the seminar or the webinar uh, strangely enough professor shivastav did not like to use three words tired retired and old he said anthropologists are never going to age age is a mental construct because anthropology is a discipline which encourages curiosity which encourages delving deep into you know the projects that you are doing to find out more to discover the why the when the where and the hows you know so a person who is curious who is enthusiastic is always young at heart and so anthropologists because of their the very nature of their work to find out to discover to search to research to travel to unknown paths to traverse you know not the known as robert frost you know he always believed in the uh, philosophy of robert frost he said if there are two choices to be made 
between easy and difficult, choose the difficult. If the choice is between known and unknown, then choose the unknown. Not the traverse path, not the trodden path. So uh, here, uh, greetings to both old, not so old, and the young anthropologists. That's my first take. And he always said he had never, ever used the word tired. And he hated the word retired because it meant being tired all over again. He always spoke about his second innings. He always spoke about a second career. He always talked about a new, a different path, you know, which he would traverse, which he would follow after uh, coming back from the Anthropological Survey of India, which would be, which would have been on the 31st of January. So that's the first part of uh, the, uh, the title, Young Anthropologist. And the second, the roadmap. A roadmap means a guideline, it means a guidebook, it means some kind of, you know, signages which tell you where to go. He said, no, I will not travel a path which is green, which is familiar, which has been trodden already, which has been traversed already, which has been discovered already, and I will traverse the path. I do not care whether there are thistles and brambles and bushes and thorns or trials and tribulations on my way, but I will travel the unknown and discover something new, discover something different, discover uh, something which nobody has done before. So his roadmap for anthropology was also something very, very different. And uh, very uh, recently, I went through all his earlier articles on, and I heard uh, all of you had spoken on the vision of anthropology, the future of anthropology, and he had certain concerns. And I, was, I had just taken them down. And his concern actually was that the growth of anthropology has been very uneven, very slow. And this was a consequence of the interiorization of anthropology, or which Erickson had termed inward gazing. And he says that the anthropologists are actually dispassionate observers, as well as citizens. They are committed to understanding the social and cultural processes, and they expect all societies and states to be just, civil, and inclusive. In the dialectics of these roles, the state of contemporary anthropology can be properly located. And he said that there are, uh, you know, there's certain uh, problems about uh, uh, social anthropology. And he said, because especially the choice of uh, the projects that uh, the young researchers and the young anthropologists are undertaking. And because, uh, you know, social anthropology is more marketable, and, they, and therefore, this is what preoccupies our young anthropologists. And they are attracted by development ecology, uh, social gerontology, medical anthropology, demographic and other fields, which would get them jobs in NGOs and in corporate houses and areas like kinship, religion, myths, beliefs, cosmology hardly attack, attract students. And he also believed that research in economy and polity has also declined. And uh, the, uh, so he, uh, you know, suggested that one should talk, uh, speak on, uh, you know, work on interdisciplinary research and that uh, there is no harm in combining with other disciplines. And he often laughingly told me, just like I have, uh, you know, married uh, anthropology is married to history. Similarly, anthropologists, uh, anthropology should also marry history. In fact, uh, there was a, a joke running around in the Department of Anthropology, Delhi University, when I wanted to join uh, a direct PhD, I was not allowed to do so. So I had to uh, join MPhil in anthropology. And uh, way back, so I was asked, you know, what is, how do you think history 
uh, and anthropology can work together. So I uh, also very jokingly told my panelists of seven who were very, very skeptical about another, a person from another discipline joining the anthropology department. So I, uh, you know, told them that I was told that anthropology is a study of man embracing woman and rest is history. So Malinowski, besides that, you know, they asked me which books I had read on anthropology, whether I've read Marvin Harris, you know, and all the others. And there was a long list, you know, and uh, I remember uh, Dr. Sait, uh, you know, asking me, taking me off that I'd not read this particular book and all, or that particular book. And again, I made a comment, which was quoted often. I said, sir, I have not read all these books. I did not need to because I had married the anthropologist. So he was my encyclopedia. He was my, he was all the hundreds and thousands of books combined. He had a wonderful, uh, clear conception of anthropology and all the anthropology that I know today and I do today is has come from him and not from the hundreds of books. So for me, he was my inspiration as I would suggest, you know, if you read his writings, if you read what he has, uh, you know, what he was more concerned about, he was concerned about, his passion was anthropology. He was concerned that, you know, uh, the anthropology, they're not talking about methodology, they're not, uh, you know, talking about theory, they're more concerned with the practicalities of anthropology and the theory and methods of anthropology uh, The as a science, as a, as, as a topic uh, itself has been neglected. So he was very, very keen that people should work on theory also and not only the, uh, the practice or the application of anthropology. And another thing that he said was that uh, uh, the seniors should act, I'm quoting him, actively support instead of devaluing scholars' commitments. They should uh, support them with time, energy, and resources, which they desperately need. They should back projects that are truly co collaborative in nature, and students whose interest is in anthropology in itself, you know, it reflects a profound responsibility. And they should ask themselves two questions. What are we willing to risk? Who is in the position to be able to demand change? And on whose shoulders must this responsibility of change lie? The future of anthropology starts from within. So if you are passionate about your subject, if you really want to know what kind of, you know, you should know what kind of anthropology would be relevant for the future, then you have to start training right now. And, you know, it should reflect in our pedagogy, in our methodolog methodological approaches, in our mentorship of uh, undergraduate and graduates, and the way we draft our job descriptions and engage in appoint, appointing persons mm -hmm. to teach this curriculum, what kind of a curriculum you should have, who should we learn from, the kind of research projects we should undertake, and to whom are the anthropologists responsible? To the community, to the society, how are they going to, and, or, and how are the departments and the discipline who are they responsible to? So this was, these were his concerns, which I'm sharing with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kumkum, ma'am, uh, for your uh, marvelous speech. I'm sure many youngsters must have uh, felt motivated. And thanks also for sharing uh, Professor Vina Srivastava concern for this subject and for the youngster. And now may I request, uh, and thanks for your benign presence along with your family members. Uh, 
and thanks for accepting our invitation uh, madam you have not uh, you know watered one sentence uh, you declare this uh, webinar open yes right. yeah. i declare this web uh, yes i declare this webinar open and i congratulate in advance all the speakers and my dear uh, young friend geetika uh who's the moderator shalina thank you very much for always keeping me in the loop and uh, professor behra who i share fond memories uh, with uh professor gregory and uh, arvin siranji he keeps talking about you many times kamal uh, mishra ji and uh, and all and everyone who i cannot see on the screen but i know they are there Uh, 129 to 130 people. Mitun, thank you very much for uh, whatever little we saw of uh, the photographs of uh, Professor Shrivastav, and I'm sure wherever he is, he would be blessing all these young anthropologists and also uh, the younger ones. Uh, you know, who are all above the age of 50 are younger anthropologists, and all the others, as he would have said, are young anthropologists. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Open. Sure, your speech. Uh, I think it is uh, no less than a professional anthropology speech. So congratulations, and uh, I take this opportunity to request Professor Gregory, our dynamic secretary, to introduce uh, the moderator. Uh, Prof yeah, Professor Gregory. So the topic itself is very, very close to Professor Srivastav to talk about. the vision and road map for anthropology in india and we have chosen this particular day national youth day which is the birth day of swami vivekananda who valued universalism and brotherhood uh, at all times and uh, some of, these are some of the important values of anthropology too he is one of the greatest spiritual and uh, social leaders he saw hope in the child and in the youth when we talk of youth it is the freshness it is the vigor it is spirit that matters and the role of the youth is to renew to refresh and to maintain and this forum very much depends on the spirit of the youth we should remember what Swami Vivekananda said, "Arise, awake, and stop not till the goal is achieved." And Professor Shiva Sir lived his life till the end to achieve the goal, and he had inspired every one of us. I see two important characters in him. He was youthful till his end, and he loved the youth, and he inspired the youth. and so this webinar we value very much the forum values very much and we expect a lot many things from the youngsters who are the future of indian anthropology and this being the first day uh, the speakers the panelists are from the eastern zone and it is professor geetika ranjan who is the moderator of this uh, today's uh, program we are very happy madam for having accepted our invitation and you are very much part of our forum and professor geetika ranjan is professor of anthropology at nehu north eastern hill university shillong meghalaya a product of lucknow university professor geetika ranjan's areas of research interest are anthropology of politics public policy diaspora and migration childhood studies and literary anthropology a recipient of the prestigious young scientist award instituted by the indian science congress as well as of the research award instituted by the university grants commission her research interests are well reflected in various international and national publications and as invited lectures in international and national conferences as a principal investigator of international 
uh, project on migration and diaspora. Professor Geetika Ranjan has worked in collaboration with the University of Copenhagen and Aarhus University in Denmark and with Kathmandu University in Nepal. Professor Geetika Ranjan has the honor of being nominated by the Ministry of Environment and Forest Government of India as a member of Village Relocation Committee to look into the relocation of villages from the Tiger Reserves of Randambar and Sariska. She has also been teaching anthropology for over 20 years and so far she has produced seven candidates uh, uh, and awarded PhD under her supervision. We are very happy, Madam, to have you here and I am sure you will um, moderate this uh, session uh, with full uh, efficiency and effect and we are expecting a lot from the panelists and I will uh, hand over the floor to you. Please uh, take over and moderate. Thank you. Mike Thank you, Professor Gregory, for your kind words. And at the outside, I would first take this opportunity to thank Professor Behra, Professor Gregory, Madam Shalina Mehta, all the seniors and veteran anthropologists, as well as all the members of this forum. Um, it is a very special day for all of us and for me also. Uh, because we are organizing this uh, webinar series in honor of our late Professor Vinay Kumar Srivastava, sir. And we attempt to pay sincere homage to his colossal contribution. He was a true inspiration for all of us for his sheer dint of his scholarship as well as for his humane qualities. My interactions with him always drove home to me his eagerness to encourage the young anthropologists to keep doing anthropology with utmost sincerity and not to become complacent. The teacher in him, the guardian in him, the senior in him, and of course the anthropologist in him shone through as he encouraged me and I'm sure so many other seekers of anthropology like me to keep growing with anthropology for anthropology. Uh, when online lecture series became the new normal in this pandemic era since March 2020, Professor Srivastava, despite his extremely demanding work schedule, made time to deliver talks at the behest of unceasing requests. I know about that because I had the good fortune of sharing some platforms with him. And uh, these webinars the large number of participants in these webinars were young anthropologists, budding anthropologists. And I had the good fortune to listen to his talks because uh, they are very much a coveted part for anybody pursuing anthropology to listen to Vanessa. And uh, the bottom line of all his talks during this pandemic lockdown period was he was encouraging the young anthropologists to go back to the basics and the basics was there is no shortcut there is no alternative to sincerity and honesty in work if it is field work it has to be field work particular no scratching of the surface so looking back at all his talks particularly in this period i now feel that he was frantically wanting to give his all to anthropology and its proliferation today as if there's no tomorrow. I don't know, I, I can go on, sir, holds a very special place for me as well as for all of us. And it's only befitting that we are beginning with this Young Anthropologist webinar series as a tribute to him and the title of the webinar series itself speaks a lot about his concern for the subject and how it's going to go ahead. So as a guiding torch, as a beacon of hope and light for us, I take this webinar ahead 
and i invite the six panelists so today uh, i'm sorry for the interruption uh, with your kind permission uh, our moderator uh, professor kritika ranjan that uh, music album is now ready to be screened if you allow then that will be screened because all uh, uh, the family members of uh, professor uh, late professor binas rivastav are still with us if you allow we'll screen because uh, it is up to you yeah. absolutely sir absolutely please okay thank you very much sir. now now we have Thank you. Yeah. Over to Professor Geeti Karanne. Thank you, sir. And uh, this audio video that we all saw. Uh, sometimes we are not left with too many words because the emotion takes over. And um, Professor Shivastav has left his indelible footprints on the sands of time for all of us to follow. And uh, I take this webinar ahead 
and invite the six panelists who are there today to share their vision of how to take anthropology forward. And in this uh, respect, I will not waste more time and invite the first speaker, Dr. Itishri Padi. Uh, Dr. Idishi Padi is uh, Associate Professor and Head of the Department of Anthropology at BJB Autonomous College, Bhuvaneshwar. And uh, her main areas of interest are tribal studies, gender studies, and studies on children. And she has published exhaustively on uh, gender in particular. With those words, uh, I request Dr. Padi to please uh, make her presentation. Namaskar. Thank you, Vitya, ma'am. Namaskar and good evening, everyone. A very happy new year to all of you. Kumkum, ma'am, namaskar. Thank you very much for making time to inaugurate the webinar. It made a difference and we are grateful. Thank you, ma'am. First, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to this forum for giving me this opportunity to express, to put my vision on anthropology. But it's difficult on my part to speak before so many veterans, including my teacher, Professor Behra. I may be excused if I fall or slip. With due permission, dedicating my presentation to Vinay Srivastava, sir. Thank you. To start with, I quote Osle Montagu from his book On Being Human, first published in the year 1950 and is considered as the most influencing book of the century. Through his thoughtful and pensive writing, in the very introduction chapter, Montagu writes, what must be realized is that every human being is a problem in search of a solution. Some are merely parts of the problem, while others constitute part of the solution. Most of us, he said, all of us need a sympathetic ear and a solution to the problem, which is the meaning of our lives, what our lives are, what they should be. Thus, the story of human society is the study of human science. That is what anthropology is. Anthropology, popularly known as human science, is not confined to tribal studies. Its nature of study and way of data collection claims to have the required skill to reach the minds of people within course, minds of people of all sections of the society. Because of its multidisciplinary base, anthropology has taken the shape of an independent discipline in Europe with inputs from scholars from almost every discipline. Mention may be made of L.H. Morgan was a lawyer and a social activist before coming to anthropology. E.B. Tyler was a missionary. James Fraser was a philosopher. While Franz Boas was trained in physics and maths, later turned to a geographer before taking to anthropology. Malinowski was a physician, while Raymond Firth was an economist. At home, I find many established anthropologists with non-anthropology background. To name a few, Professor Sarat Chandra Roy was a lawyer, Professor Iravati Kave, Professor M. N. Srinivas, Professor G. S. Kuha, all from philosophy. Professor Sachidananda had history, while Professor Ayappan had master's degree in zoology with a diploma in economics. Even in our forum, we have many veteran anthropologists from different disciplines, like Professor Binay Srivastava, sir, from sociology, Professor Satyanarayan Ratha from economics and history, Professor Gregory 
from philosophy and English literature, Professor K.K. Basa from history, and my teacher, Professor Behra from botany. Needless to say, all of them, each of them has been constructively contributing towards the growth of anthropology and human development as true anthropologist. Thus, anthropology has the beneficiary of multidisciplinary experiences. It deals with everything that is relevant for human existence <laughs> as a part of the society. Now, what makes this discipline unique and specific and distinct is its long periods of field work with people at micro level who live in a face-to-face -face environment. That means to be there with people, to observe firsthand, and never to take a break until it is all over. I repeat, never to take a break until it is all over. Thus, fieldwork is the, I quote Professor Behra, fieldwork is the hallmark of anthropology. And the cornerstone of fieldwork is curiosity and interest. Curiosity is expressed in observation, which in turn can be simple source of innovative ideas. Observation helps people to develop interest, to talk about themselves, to enjoy meeting and talking to strangers, to ask probing questions in such a way that encourage people to reveal about themselves and to unfold many untold stories disclosing strange human behavior. In addition to all this, I must add here, good observation flows from certain amount of self-discipline resulting fresh insights into things we are looking for. And when it comes to participant observation, it establishes a much closer personal bonding with people of study that lasts beyond fieldwork. This is the unique professional commitment of anthropology. That is why anthropological studies are considered as more relevant and more authentic while formulating policies and programs for the well-being of people and their development. In this context, I would like to discuss Franz Boas cultural relativism. Franz Boas was the first to recognize time space determinant of human behavior. To him, cultural relativism is an ethical position in which all cultures are regarded as equal, each being autonomous and unique on its own. He said, no culture is superior or inferior because each culture has a history, has a journey of its own, which is different from every other culture. That is why anthropologists are expected to be neutral while studying people of other cultures. They should not make judgments about the merits of one culture over other culture. Here I see the term ethnocentrism needs to be mentioned. What is ethnocentrism? The tendency of a judging other culture through the standard of one's own culture is broadly termed as ethnocentrism. Ethnocentrism is perpetuated directly or indirectly, consciously or unconsciously, to put down people of other cultures, their way of life, their way of doing things as bizarre or inferior. And you know, anthropologists have special skills to identify, analyze, and understand those people who are different with different cultural, economic, and technological development. And we anthropologists attempt to overcome ethnocentrism as much possible while studying people of other cultures by trying to be more objective 
about cultural differences and by being more tolerant towards the people of other cultures. This is again one more point that makes anthropology unique and distinct. Now heading towards the last part, it is interesting to see how anthropologists are embracing human behavior with many surprises. Their genuine love for watching and talking to people help them to locate many touch points of a situation that have been overlooked, misunderstood, or not understood at all. This is the master key of anthropological study. Here, I would like to remind what Elvin had suggested. Elvin advised the government of India to approach tribesmen with the minds of tribesmen. Jawaharlal Nehru also suggested that tribal people should be allowed to develop along the lines of their own genius. It is only anthropologists who see that development of people lies hidden somewhere in their ethos itself. This is what should I say is the essence of anthropology, our discipline. Now, before I conclude, two questions that come to my mind are how the world is looking at anthropology, how anthropology is looking at the entire human society, and what is its vision. From salt text to rivers, to Professor L.K. Mahapatra, to Professor Satya Ratha, and our own Vinay Srivastava sir, each of them has emphatically told that the uniqueness of anthropology lies in its vision, that is to unite the whole world. I repeat, to unite the whole world is the vision of anthropology. I may sound too small to put my point. Choti mu badi baat hogi. But all my senses have the same feel that the only vision of anthropology and the only vision of this forum is to unite the whole world by just being human. Just being human, fully agreeing to what Osle Modagu has spent. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Dr. Padi. And uh, you have set the ball rolling by bringing back the USPs of anthropology, talking about fieldwork and cultural relativism and uh, the humanistic aspect of the discipline. Uh, thank you very much for that. I take this uh, forum forward, this webinar forward, and now invite our uh, next speaker, uh, Dr. Prasanna Kumar Patra. Uh, he is currently serving as Associate Professor of Anthropology and as Coordinator of Center of Excellence in Studies on Tribal and Marginalized Communities um, uh, at, uh, um, so, um, at Utkal University. And his main areas of interest where he has worked extensively are medical anthropology, biological anthropology, demography, and tribal health and the science and technology studies and anthropology. So uh, I request uh, Dr. Patra uh, to please um, take the floor and make your presentation. Very good. Thank you. I'm privileged and honored to have part of this, which is one of the doyens of Indian anthropology, my reverend teacher, Vinesh Srivastava, respected Kum Kum Srivastava Madam for her benign presence, respected moderator of today's panel, Madam Gitika Ranjan, my dear other respected members of the four and their participants. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to make a brief deliberation on 
my vision and road road map for anthropology this is such a beautiful and important topic but i do not know whether it will be within my field to at a map or to have a vision a discipline which is and so diverse is quite aware that i am not saying anything new here rather i'm just saying what i have gathered through listening from others in this forum or elsewhere the points that i'll be sharing here is based on my long term discussion with two of my distinguished colleagues at utkal university their professor kishor basha who is a teacher like colleague and a mentor and dr kanu satpati who is an associate professor of biological anthropology i would like to thank them and i will touching the in small uh, and these points are conceptual methodological and operational in nature first is the central idea of anthropology whether it is a strength or liability for the discipline we all know that it is emerging in the name of interdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity which professor padhi just narrated and have promoted as the basics for all kinds of futuristic work for the society even the new education policy is providing and promoting it but anthropology already have an in the form of it is the hallmark of anthropology we all take pride in that and of course there is a reason for that holism is more than just a cobbling together of this anthropology has historically attempted to cultivate a comprehensive approach to human condition anthropology has long been contested filled with roots in both scientific and humanistic discourse the four field approach in american anthropology has been used by some as a means of suppressing conflict and enforcing a false sense of unity while critics of the four field approach are warranted in fact holism represents anthropology's greatest strength anthropology gains a competitive advantage over other disciplines in its ability to combine biological and cultural approaches in time and space in order to promote the idea of holism at the operational level we need to adopt the four fold approach at the level of teaching and research while saying this we must also recognize that there is a growing concern that holism is a liability to the department to the discipline it is because of the decreasing rigor in field work a very different trajectories that anthropology departments in india take in their academic evolution and competition from many of the specialization and sub, sub disciplines within and outside anthropology where holism is felt as a challenge to growth and the second point that i would like to discuss is emerging of tribal studies <clears throat> i have heard many anthropologists being critical about the emergence of tribal studies as a separate entity to anthropology and at places as a combination with anthropology there are many departments being established as department of anthropology and tribal studies it is observed in contemporary academics that perspectives concepts and approaches to tribal studies are no confined to the discipline of anthropology this is something that many anthropologists who consider that they have somewhat a monopolistic influence on tribal studies is being increasingly challenged by disciplines ranging from humanities life science subjects that are engaged in study of tribes in situ or in transition in this context i would like to say two things one we must welcome the interest shown by an involvement of other discipline disciplinary experts in the study of tribes so that a new synthesis may develop for better understanding of the complexities in tribal society and culture tribal nutrition and livelihood tribal economy and entrepreneurship tribal development and issues relating to biodiversity and bio perspective i am saying this because we should not be complacent or indulge in self praising about our perspectives methods and approaches rather we should be open minded about a give and take approach towards other disciplines the second point would be places where anthropology is quite synonymous with tribal studies i would rather say for better appreciation of anthropology we should look beyond our incessant focus on the tribe we must understand that the focus of anthropology on 
tribal studies grew with an intention of understanding the simple societies or the marginals, as Levistos said, <clears throat> such as the tribals, for clues to understand complex societies. Therefore, I would suggest that such while consolidating studies on the tribal tribals, anthropology should also develop interest in mainstream societies, try to recognize the new marginals. For instance, the urban poor, the LGBTs, patient groups of various disease profiles, clinical trial subjects, etc., could, could be the target of anthropology. The third point would be anthropological methods. I respectfully remember what Professor Binas Srivastav, a word teacher, saying a number. There is a problem in audio. It seems so. It's <laughs> While we keep fighting for our rightful place and scope for employment, uh, we must also. Okay, let me uh, put up my video so that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I want to emphasize is that while keeping on fighting for our rightful place and scope for employment, we must also keep on upscaling the skill of for students by providing them different capacity building programs such as making summer intensive part of the curriculum to continuous expose develop museums good teaching learning resources and second regulatory organize regularly organizing themes or component specific workshops and orientation courses for MPhil and phd scholars on theme based like literature review research methodology report writing and paper writing post presentation at I would just give one example from Utkal experience of initiating summer internship with SCST, RTI and other government agencies. In this context, I would like to thank Sir A.B. Ota, Director of SCST, RTI, Government of Odisha and Bhubaneswar, for mentoring us and providing our personal and institutional support system for conducting summer internship. So this kind of exposure needs to be given to our students, especially uh, for the universities which are situated in provincial cities. And then the crux is we should make our students and scholars employment ready for those who want to enter into various job markets and simultaneously make our research scholars as creative and critical thinkers. And the next point would be, I, <clears throat> I would like to emphasize on Indian anthropology going global. As we all know India is rapidly emerging as a knowledge economy in many fields, including science and technology, business, communication, space, science. The current vaccine developed for COVID-19 is such example. But when we search for a critical anthropological or social science reflection or study on India's engagement with the rest of the world, in this sphere, we realize that India's social sciences in general and anthropology in particular is lagging behind or not in a competitive position. Therefore, with the emergence of India as a knowledge economy and with resources available for carrying out in newer areas, this is an increasing space for anthropology in India to go out of its comfort zone and to go for a deeper academic engagement. Like Europeans did study us, are the others in the 19th and part of 20th century, can there be a study of European society by Indian anthropologists from India? Similarly, area studies on different geopolitical and cultural zones of the world, such as East Asia, Southeast Asia, Middle East, Eastern, African, can be attempted by Indian anthropology. Of course, there is an example from Mutkal University, where it had a specialization on Southeast Asian studies initiated by established initiated and established by the great anthropologist led Professor L.K. Mahapatra. Professor uh, Kamal Misra is here. He is also uh, involved in that center. The department offered studies on Southeast Asian studies and culture, and many projects were also carried out <coughs> through that. 
but to go step wise on going global or glo- going out of our comfort zone there should be avenues created to do interzonal studies within india in the first phase we do not find a department in odisha going and studying say a society in kerala or in northeast this should be encouraged and the next point would be self study and auto ethnography one more thing that all of us know is auto ethnography re study or studying one's own culture has become a welcome departure in anthropology auto ethnography is an approach to research and writing that seeks to describe and systematically analyze personal experience in order to understand cultural experience from anthropological and tribal studies perspectives especially in the context of western india this is going to be a huge area of research if one looks at the number of anthropology department in eastern and northeast india and the profile of students interested to carry out study on their own communities and culture for right or wrong historical or political reasons is having a lot of potential but it needs a specific kind of orientation and training i feel collectively all of us and special for a role to play and the next point that i would like to bring in is the need for an anthropological sts group or science and technology study group this is i'm saying from my own experience of working in the areas of anthropological study science and technology this is a anthropology or if we look at pattern and term change that the indian society is witnessing because of the influence of rapid change in science and technology especially in the field of information technology agriculture and medical biotechnology including pharmaceuticals their impact on society needs critical study especially i would focus i see focus studies on ethical legal and social implications which is known as lc studies on various issues to name a few the impact of new reproductive technology on infertility stem cell therapy genomic biobanking gm crops clinical drug trials non invasive prenatal testing each one of them is having serious ethical legal and social implications that need anthropological reflections and critical study last point would be let's let's focus on neglected area of research though it is desirable for any generation of practitioners or teachers or thinkers or planners to give vision to a discipline but to large extent no one can predict how a discipline would grow and in which all directions because it depends on so many extrinsic and intrinsic factors the change of can happen that it would be imaginable to channelize the change in being that we know that exist a deep concern among many biologists that some branches getting undivided at the cost of others some are growing faster and other certain existing challenge for example branches linguistic anthropology prehistoric archaeology and the other are not going to attention whereas many such demography health and nutrition development project related studies are being preferred for research the motivation could be such as being less resource intense faster degree i think the idea of position to i would this can be have thought this these are the i i said that i said the thing out to the so that so they can for concerned thank you very much for thank you dr patra uh, for a very uh, thought provoking uh, talk and uh, you are dreaming big and it's very important to dream big because with determined dreams only the first steps towards the right action are taken you have raised pertinent points and especially about the fact that uh, while maintaining the unique aspect of indian anthropology how we can look at indian anthropology against the broader global framework of global anthropology and see ourselves being placed there in uh, a bigger form so uh, you, uh, thank you very much for spelling out your vision in so many different directions and uh, i request now uh, uh, our third speaker uh, dr sumahan bandopadhyay
He is associate professor of the Department of Anthropology at Vidya Sagar University, and his areas of interest are ethnography, tribal development, and uh, he's done a lot of work on anthropology of religion as well as anthropology of performance. So, uh, with those words, I invite Dr. Sumahan Bandupadhyay to please make his uh, presentation. Thank you very much, madam. Good evening to you all. I convey all my regards and thanks to the forum for giving me this opportunity to share my vision and roadmap for anthropology in India. That is the title of today's panel. So without uh, wasting much time, let me come to the topic. The idea of vision delineates an ability to see with an implied meaning of seeing the future. So it is futuristic in a sense and Professor Binay Kumar Srivastava while talking about anthropologist once said that anthropologist is a futurist and imaginer. So again, when we use the metaphor of road to chart out the perceived locations of anthropology in India, it again indicates a condition that is destined as a road has a destination. But at the same time, a road comes from somewhere and leads to another direction when I find myself standing on it. That the implicit meaning that road map expresses combines the idea of a past, present and future of anthropology. At one point, uh, therefore I must uh, uh, tell you about the future and in another, another uh, on the other hand, I should mention what I understand by anthropology. So this will be the two main thing that I am going to present. And uh, my uh, uh, that entire discussion, I shall try to confine it within 10 to 12 minutes, ha has four major sections. One is the idea of the vision and roadmap, what I have understood. Uh, the second section is on the discussion on the future of anthropology. The third one is what I identify uh, the important fields of anthropology, what I consider as my kind of anthropology. And third one, uh, and the fourth one is what we expect uh, as as the as the the future roadmap of anthropology and what what how should we shape the present. So now studies on the status of anthropology and its future, there are a number of studies, particularly in the last three decades. And over these last three decades, we have some publication in the, in the Western journals and, and, and some works earlier there, of course, some books are there, some chapters are there. But in, uh, the, in the pages of uh, the Journal of Indian Anthropological Society, we find articles like, is anthropology is dead or dying or something or, or, of this type of papers and works are there but there is a clear message that there is a kind of crisis in anthropology and when we uh, talk about this crisis uh, we, we, we can remember uh, what Bidne uh, in 1953 identified seven different categories of crisis. These are uh, idealistic and materialistic uh, crisis though he related it to the uh, cultural crisis, but still it has relevance for the crisis in anthropology as well. And there were uh, 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 crises uh, sired by the polar concept of culture. There was crisis related to the contradiction between natural and cultural, related to the theoretical and practical. There, there was survival and, uh, and axiological crises. There was crisis of uh, acculturation and some perpetual crisis. 
So these different uh, types of crisis he mentioned, and I must admit that the many crises he talked still hold ground, albeit in a changed form, and 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 we we continue to uh, have discussion on it. Gregory in 2002 identified the following major uh, uh, problematic issues with regard to anthropology in India, and these are employment related to employment. Uh, related to the identity, theoretical crisis, competition with sociology, and its its slow growth. It has a it is it is mostly confined to higher studies. So and also he he identified there was a lack of sense of anthropologicality. And when when I am mentioning all these uh, these these past uh, works and 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 the and the contemporary works, these are related to my vision of anthropology and and also also these are these are important while talking about uh, or, or charting out the roadmap for anthropology in india <clears throat> so broadly understood uh, a crisis as outlined above are philosophical theoretical methodological and practical in nature there are a lot of overlaps in these categories in spite of their primacy of focus. But it is undeniable after so many years uh, uh, of these deliberations that the nature of problems remains more or less same uh, as, as they were earlier. So when you talk about the future of anthropology, it must be taken into account how the past was lived. Now, if we have a very uh, uh, brief uh, review of works, we, we find that while uh, talking about the future of anthropology, uh, considering the present situation, Spyro in 1986 uh, uh, talks about cultural relativism and its and future. Kuhlman, as early as 1990s, uh, talked about the crisis and, and, and talking about a new synthesis in anthropology in his editorial uh, of, of the journal and Rubel Rosman uh, while uh, talking about the representation that the nature of representation is now an issue in anthropology and may have a, a great impact in the anthropology in the days to come and but 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 at the same time he reminded they reminded Rubel and Rosman in 1994 reminded us that there is a general future there is a future for anthropology if we continue to hold the general goal of the understanding of human cultural behavior. So we must remain grounded in anthropology. That was the message. And uh, what to, to, to deal with the, the, with the present situation, uh, Baba in 1994 made, uh, had, a, had a very informative article written, wrote a very in informative article, but at the same time gave some recommendation which are still pertinent today that, that he emphasized on education and training, uh, on collaborative research, on ethical consideration and globalization that my previous uh, uh, panelists have already mentioned about. By 2010, there was a, a discussion that, that uh, the, about the end of anthropology. Uh, uh, Komarov uh, uh, mentioned that there is a cry at some quarters that the, the anthropology is at a very, a very, very critical situation and end of anthropology. But he assured that it is not so and, and the assured future lies in a dialectic discourse in the contemporary work uh, through redefining of scales, conceptual foundation and techniques of knowledge production. So these are the things that we can take up uh, uh, and, and, the, and the end of anthropology is, is just a misnomer. Cole again uh, reminded us about the past and how past was, uh, was important for anthropology and while talking about this he, he, he mentioned that how we shall uh, depend on the achievements of the past uh, and use the deal with the achievements of the past will shape our future. So and appeals a call uh, for an analyze for an analysis of the open future. So there are futures for anthropologists, and for that some struggles struggles may be undertaken, as Ribera calls some of these struggles as utopian struggles. But still, struggles are important. 
and Barrent in 2020 uh, talked about a multimodal approaches, a multi temporality in anthropology of, of, of the contemporary. Uh, now to come to my vision of anthropology, uh, taking uh, the, the, the uh, clues and ideas from my earlier scholars uh, and, 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 the, and, and the review of these works, uh, let me come to, uh, to what, what I understand, what is my vision of anthropology. Uh, a decade ago, I wrote a paper in the uh, Journal of the Indian Anthropological Society that had the title that Finding Self in the Other. Now to characterize anthropology, I would say anthropology is about finding self in the other as well as uh, finding other in the self. To me, anthropology is an approach to know how people make the meaning of the world. In other words, it is also to see how people do the same thing differently across culture and do the different thing in a more or less same ways. I am neither a pessimist nor an optimist, rather I am more a pragmatist. I would like to see the future of my discipline to be shaped more on a pragmatic line. It means that the subject should flourish with a sense of being and a sensitivity to the beings in which the inanimate world is personified too. This is necessary since the location of the discipline has changed significantly over the past few decades with regard to its philosophical, theoretical, methodological and applied aspects. The axiology of traditional binaries does not hold much ground now. However, these polarities still remain axiomatic, not confronting each other but negotiating. The dialectic between universalism and relativism is a case in point. The ethical consideration entered into this judgment, particularly at a point of time when we are talking about the reflexive subject. This philosophical, the philosophical implication uh, uh, of this position has been, uh, uh, has been tremendously uh, powerful as it has influenced the shift of focus from collective to individual and ushered in a cosmopolitan turn in the discipline. In future, these will become more manifest. So at this juncture, we, we, we want to take uh, or we should take up those areas which, which the society uh, who, uh, expects from us that, that regarding, regarding uh, regarding some very basic issues at the same time how the society is being changed uh, uh, that 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 must be taken into consideration so the important fields may be like anthropology of performance literary anthropology philosophical anthropology business anthropology anthropology of governance development digital and cyber anthropology new social and political movement that are taking place concerning environment, climate, disaster, tribes and ethnic groups, visual, urban, new religion. These are the areas which, in which we can specialize and we have to specialize in an interdisciplinary way that Professor Srivastava once, uh, once uh, talked, uh, 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 discussed in his uh, celebrated article in 1999. So the, we have to we have to acknowledge that the traditional boundaries are getting blurred. Now they are interpenetrating. There are themes that we must take into account. Therefore, the kind of practice that we should take uh, should include a combination of field and archive. Taking our schedule, nature of work, we cannot go for a, 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 go to the field for an extended period. So we should have a, a combination uh, between uh, a balance between field and archival study, field-based studies and archival study. We should have a combination between theoretical studies and activism that includes uh, includes applied uh, anthropology action anthropology as well as well as we have to tip we have to be we, 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 we must be academic and popular at the same time there must be some combination balanced combination between academic and popular we must write in vernacular to popularize popularize our our discipline and uh, talk about have a, have a say on the contemporary issues 
so with these few words i i think i have already charted out or already have outlined what kind of anthropology we, we would like to see at present. And in this regard, our forum is uh, making a very, very meaningful, uh, 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 giving a very meaningful uh, job, meaningful service uh, to the discipline, uh, to the academics, that is this platform, this kind of discourses will, will enlighten us, will also equip us for a for a for a better uh, role in, in, in future, and in this regard, I must say that the kinds we should uh, take up some some uh, practice that will 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 uh, enhance our credibility, that will enhance our capability as well. That I I I shall like to see that good practices are inculcated in our personality that we care to respond and take responsibility. There should be a consistency between words and actions. I would like to see that our senior scholars and professors will be writing more and, and, and showing us ways with their works and thoughts. And we at the same time must work hard. We, we should come together in solidarity for the discipline. We must have freedom of choosing our topics of research, not dictated by politics, or power with ulterior motive. And we would, we would also like to see that the success in anthropology must be achieved through anthropology and not marred by personal or any other biases. So with these few words, I, 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 I convey my thanks and regards once again uh, for giving me uh, this opportunity to share my view. Uh, uh, my vision of anthropology. Thank you very much once again. Thank you, Dr. Sumahan Bandupatyay, for bringing in so many vital issues which require so much, so much of thought about how to go ahead. And we will discuss all these in details after the presentations are over. And uh, you have reinstated what the other two speakers had also emphasized that how is the time has come to become more sensitive and become more ethical. I think these two points have come out in all the three presentations and we will talk more later on. And uh, thank you very much. I now invite um, our next speaker of the day, Dr. Rashmi Pramanik. Uh, she's assistant professor in the Department of Anthropology at Sambalpur University. And her main areas of work are anthropology of children and childhood, tribal studies and gender issues. Uh, Dr. Rashmi Pramanik, uh, we would like to hear you. A very good evening to one and all at the outset. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to Professor Grigory for giving me an opportunity to share my views in this forum. I would also like to thank the general president of this forum, Professor Deepak Kumar Behera, who is my teacher and research supervisor. My deep sense of gratitude to Professor Kumkum Srivastava for inaugurating this important lecture series in the memory of late Professor Sivasava. Honorable Chairperson of the session, Professor Gitika Ranjan, my colleagues, the panelists of the session, and all the eminent anthropologists who have virtually joined in this lecture series. So uh, today I would like to speak on the reflections of the status of anthropology in India. Anthropology is the only academic field that addresses the whole range of human variation. But in practice, it developed the specialist tracks, the four fields as they were often termed, cultural social anthropology, biological anthropology, prehistoric archaeology, and linguistics. So my previous panelists have really made my job very light. They have spoke uh, widely about the importance of Indian anthropology, I shall directly hint upon my vision. My vision of anthropology in India can be examined in two perspectives, which are the prospect of anthropologists in India, the prospect of the discipline itself in terms of conceptual and theoretical developments. 
anthropology in india has failed to evolve its own distinct identity anthropology in india though never really took off the ground as no distinct indian anthropology has developed since the establishment of the first department of anthropology in the country in 1920 a crisis in an academic discipline occurs when the discipline starts lacking direction and its usefulness becomes a suspect a situation like this has prevailed in indian anthropology for a long while while the global anthropological enterprise in the past four decades has largely shifted from description of unique small isolated groups to analytical problem oriented research useful for cross cultural comparison anthropology in india still follows the colonial anthropologists footstep of studying the marginalized peoples and the process of integration into the mainstream poverty of ideas in anthropology can only be overcome if indian practitioners learn to identify the plethora of social problems afflicting indian society operationalize and actualize the ideas in response to them hence the discipline itself is considered not intrinsically important and consequently it suffers in the form of getting less funding for faculty recruitment and very less fund for research as well visualizing the status of anthropology in our country it indeed conveys a sad state of discipline that its directionless lack in focus and priorities moreover each and every academic discipline has a responsibility to rehabilitate its practitioners which in turn ensures its sustenance anthropology has largely failed in this effort it can be said in all fairness that anthropology is a good discipline to complement other disciplines but not good enough for itself hence it has to be more present day problem oriented especially development oriented in the context of a developing country like ours indian anthropologists do not apparently identify their own social problems they are content with dealing those ubiquitous notions of caste and tribe as if they have nothing else to offer indian society today is plagued with such social problems like poverty hunger illiteracy lack of health care nutrition lack of safe drinking water alcohol and drug abuse industrial accident property dealers menace etc these are left to be handled by activists social workers non governmental organizations journalists and the police the intellectuals in the university apparently do not recognize the academic merits of this problem unless these are noticed and handled first by our western intellectual gurus they have been gaps and loopholes in anthropology in the research and, and teaching of course we need to radically transform their focus and priorities indian anthropologists need to reorient themselves which would include new and innovative courses as a measure of curriculum development what is very practical at the university level though i do not blame the young research students because they are not trained to think originally usually what happens is the research supervisors de determine the research topic for the students the scholars should consult and discuss about the topic in their own interest with the supervisors rather than being imposed a topic it is again unfortunate to see that in spite of nearly 45 departments of anthropology in different universities in the country the, the anthropological survey of india is one of the largest anthropological organization and many organizations engaged in anthropological research as in different states of our country still then indian anthropology has failed to carve out its new place in world anthropology we are still trying to develop a concrete theory or concept which would be universally recognized nonetheless we have written uncountable number of books produced n number of phds but we have failed to produce a school it sounds very pessimistic indian society and culture present perhaps the most fertile ground for anthropological studies particularly in the terms of variety of ethnic groups and cultures if we examine the history of any of the anthropological theories in the mid 19th and the 20th century such as evolutionism 
diffusionism, functionalism, structuralism, structural functionalism, and the matter of cultural and personality school. We discuss, we discover that all the effort made theories are based upon the study of the so-called exotic and savage people. The people who lived comparatively in geographical and social isolation in different parts of the earth. Our country represents all the cradles of culture and civilization from the Jawars and the sentinels living naked in the jungles of Andamans and practicing hunting and gathering economy to the horticulturists and shifting cultivators and from the pastorals, artisans and peasants of rural India to the cyber culture of metropolitan cities. We find here representatives of all stages of human culture. Any anthropological program today should be designed to improve the student's understanding of complex development problems with an anthropological framework. There are hardly any courses taught, so to say, anthropology of development, the ethics of development in a global environment, social cultural implications of high technology, urban problems in anthropological perspective, feminist theory in anthropology, law and conflict management, demographic anthropology, etc. There are some courses which should prove self-motivating to a student because their association with cognizable real life problems in contrast to the traditional courses, like so to say the society and religion. For this, the students usually requires cram knowledge. Along with innovative course teaching, practical training is also necessary, just as the previous panelist was speaking about. A cooperative mechanism has to be devised whereby university students can be provided with internship with international development organizations in metropolitan cities, local NGOs now found in almost all university towns apart from the big cities and public and private development agencies. It is a pity that while jobs abound in the social development sector for the students in anthropology, they are not trained and equipped to work in these sectors. This device will enhance the employability of the students in addition to sustaining the development of the discipline in the country with an indigenous color. One discovers that ever since the seeds of anthropological researches in India were sown, till date, hardly a few words named the word at the theoretical and conceptual levels were done in Indian anthropology. Though thousands of books and articles were written in anthropological nature during the last hundred years in India, but barring a few exceptions, all lacked in analysis. Most of them, I say, lacked analysis at the abstract theoretical and conceptual level. It appears that by and large, Indian anthropology anthropologists refrain from attempting abstract level analysis out of the empirical data. We are no doubt very good field workers, but we should develop the skill to meet up our field data along with the theory or base it up with a model that actually brings in a different and concrete picture of the research. So I would like to conclude by saying that our contemporary mosaic of Indian society and culture should provide a breeding ground for the genesis and development of anthropological theories and concepts. We should train and equip our students to explore jobs in the development sectors. So I congratulate the forum for taking a very good venture in this direction and also appeal the forum so that we all will join hands together for the development and growth of Indian anthropology in our country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Pramanik. It was a very hard hitting uh, talk, which I think all of the people practicing anthropology do need because it's a wake up call. We are celebrating 100 years of teaching anthropology but that does not mean that we remain cushioned against uh, the comfort zone of whatever we have achieved so far and lag behind in the process of addressing the quest of human beings. There's no point uh, blaming the others. And when I say others, it means the other disciplines uh, when uh, we feel left behind because I think a lot of in-house remedy is required and your uh, lecture spoke about uh, it in a very hard-hitting way 
for all of us to rethink and move on with a new and a fresh uh, ambition and mind and a realistic attitude thank you very much dr pramanik and uh, i would take the um, webinar ahead and request our next speaker dr nivedita nath uh, assistant professor and head school of anthropology gangadhar meher university her areas of interest are also childhood studies and gender and tribal studies and uh, dr nath we i invite you to please make your talk we are looking forward to hearing you microphone on kar nivedita uh, yes ma'am thank you so much professor geetika ranjan madam my namaskar and good evening to everyone my pranam to all the stalwarts of anthropology and best wishes to all the scholars and students at the outset i'd like to express my heartfelt thanks to uiaf for giving me this opportunity in the young anthropologist webinar series i feel really honored by getting this opportunity thank you so much uiaf thank you uh, kumkum madam for joining us i could feel professor sivastav sar's presence in the webinar because of your presence it is very difficult to say in front of many eminent anthropologists in the platform i could see the stalwarts of anthropologists professor deepak kumar behera sir who is my guide professor joshi professor um, uh, professor uh, arvin sinha sir uh, professor uh, salina mehta madam and uh, professor ota professor kk mishra and many more eminent anthropologists still i am trying to speak few lines on the theme of the webinar to start with the emergence of uiaf is actually uiaf it is an unintentional incidental accidental and fast emerging body and as my previous speaker told i'll also say that the emergence of uiaf is a coincidence in the 100th years of teaching anthropology in india and the year of demise of our most beloved anthropologist professor binay kumar srivastava sir whose main concern was the growth of anthropology in india he was igniting the enthusiastic anthropologists within us and he was inspiring us to move ahead i remember his words in his last speech on the uiaf's platform why always we why we why not you start why not you take the initiative he was expecting the up upcoming anthropologists to be more active now it's our duty to nurture uif to water it to grow it this is the best tribute to professor sibastava sir wherever he is he must be feeling happy to see all the anthropologists senior and boarding doing webinar and discussion on the road map for anthropology in india and now to start with for the first part my vision of anthropology i'll tell on five things i'll our focus our perspective our methods and our approaches and from the very beginning i want to make it clear that since my specialization is social anthropology my vision to some extent may not be befitting to physical anthropology or prehistoric archaeology and for the second part the road map for anthropology in india i have divided my presentation into two parts firstly on the short term goals and secondly on the long term goals to start with on my vision of anthropology i like to say that i have just jotted down what i think what anthropology should study what we should study what uh, how we should study and uh, for uh, the road map i have just jotted down what we should do we must do for the growth of anthropology in india firstly we must study indigenous people we must study tribal people we should welcome interdisciplinary approach we should be innovative we should be broad minded i don't deny but we should not leave we should not move away from our core area from the core value of the subject of anthropology 
we must study other societies but our priority should be the study of indigenous people the study of tribal people and the second point which kumkum madam also stressed which professor sibastava was telling study of culture the cultural aspect we must study from cultural perspective because that is the uniqueness of anthropology and the moreover the anthropology in india and third we must not go far away from qualitative approach which is the uniqueness of anthropology we should do quantitative analysis but we must maintain our qualitative approach which is the essence of anthropology and the fourth one is we must continue our field work tradition which my previous speakers professor uh, padhi professor patra stressed because this is the hallmark of anthropology and the methods of data collection the use of interview observation method case study method particularly participant observation method wherever possible and applicable and the fifth one is the holistic study of man which is the most unique feature of anthropology for which it's different from all other subjects a child can be studied from a cultural perspective and also from a biological perspective and in the contemporary time where is the uniqueness of anthropology where is the holistic approach where is the holistic perspective where is the anthropological perspective and where is the field work tradition in the present time other subjects in social sciences like economic sociology social work and many other subjects are taking up the studies of indigenous people they are adopting our methodologies but we anthropologists are moving away from studies of indigenous people in the name of interdisciplinary study in the name of um, um, uh, super specialization we are moving towards quantitative approaches we are adopting shortcut and easy methods of data collection are we doing the real kind of field work which we should do in anthropology no we are doing the field work for a shorter period of time we are going to the field we are coming back from the field we are not staying in the field this is not the methods in anthropology as we are moving away from our core area our perspective our methods our approach we are losing our credibility our importance and the uniqueness of our subject we should study all kinds of society but our priority should be study of indigenous people we must do quantitative analysis but to a limit we must not leave the qualitative uh, aspect of the study we must study it to our field work tradition and anthropological perspective we should do interdisciplinary study but we must uh, but my point is that uh, what i would like to say the uh, the tadka of anthropology should be there the flavor of anthropology must come out when someone looks into a research paper when someone reads a thesis then only anthropology can stand at the top of all the societies all the sciences and all the humanities and now coming to the second part of the road map for anthropology in india uh, <coughs> i'll Uh, divide, I have divided my presentation into two parts, but before that, UIF is emerging as a strong network of anthropologists. I think it is the first ever such organization of anthropology in India, which has such huge members from all ages, all corners, and all branches of anthropology at present. And at present, it is the most active of all the existing organizations. and we must move ahead to remove the crisis what professor sribastava had seen in anthropology in india and therefore while speaking about the road map for anthropology in india since we all have gathered under the umbrella of uiaf uiaf i have um, i have thought of some short term goals and long term goals which we should do under the banner of uiaf and the first one is a directory of anthropologists must be prepared and uploaded in the website which will act as a ready reference for everyone in search of any information about all anthropologists in india the directory must contain the name the designation the institutional affiliation the specialization the email id and phone number to be frank enough before being a part of uiah i have never seen many stalwarts of anthropology physically and because of this uiaf because of these webinars 
because of this google meet platforms i can see many eminent anthropologists i can not only i but all the I, i'll say that all the young anthropologists all the students all the scholars could see all the eminent anthropologists and i have decided I, i have thought of a blueprint for the preparation of this directory but if time permits at the last so if the uh, forum gives me permission then i can discuss about it and the second point is we must start a publication of edited volumes in series and a biannual journal we must try to incorporate our journal in ugc care list and scopus list as all the stalwarts of anthropology are now members of uiaf who are very talented who are very resourceful and they can contribute and they can guide us in this direction the third point is skill honing since uif is again the most active body now and we can try to start some uh, small courses in anthropology and try to get approval from ugc for this particularly on research and publication related courses because those areas need to be strengthened and also on developing soft skills and technical skills needed for the researchers and the academicians and the fourth point is um, the incorporation of anthropology in school level and in more and more number of colleges incorporating at school level may need much effort as anthropology is at school level neither in the icse pattern nor in the cbsc pattern but i think we can incorporate anthropology in all the higher secondary uh, level and in all the degree colleges and university and, and universities with a little effort and the fifth point is advocacy for more employment opportunities in anthropology because the scope of employability will uh, rise the importance of the subject all employment related advertisements should be posted in the website and more and more number of anthropologists must be included in the policy making bodies then only they can make remarkable changes in the field of employment opportunities in anthropology and introducing anthropology in school level and in more and more colleges and universities and the sixth point which i'd like to for light is uh, uif is moving fast it has uh, you know uh, done a lot of activities in the last 3 months uh, but one of the area is that the inclusion of international members although we have already conducted two webinars with overseas invited uh, lectures uh, still if we will discuss more on um, inclusion of international members in the in our body then we can build up an international platform like iu aes and the last point is collaboration webinars can be done in collaboration with different universities the faculties of the concerned university will do all the works related to the webinar it will be beneficial in two ways uif will reach all departments of the country and all the departments will remain connected with uif now coming to the long term goals of uif the first one is a compilation of titles and abstracts of all the researches done in anthropology should be done at three levels all the phd works all the postdoctoral works and all the project works it must contain the name of the researcher the principal investigator the guide the institutional affiliation title subjects uh, funding agency if any and the year of completion this is very very important because everybody can know what are the works done in anthropology and we can avoid repetitions and can think up new areas of research and we can do do this in the same model as i have thought of for the preparation of directory of anthropologist and the second long term goal uh, is the ethnographic study of all tribes of of india first will cover all the pbtgs and then second all the scheduled tribes can uh, can be covered because india has its uniqueness in terms of concentration of tribal population in the world map of anthropology during the pre and post independent period a lot of studies were done on different tribes some documentations has been done by anthropological survey of india ministry of culture and tribal research institutes still some tribes are not yet covered and some tribes some tribes are covered again and again we are still following the book by tribe sapodisa by jk das and the book by hiralal and rostel whenever we search for ethnographic profile of any tribe of india so we must publish 
a series of volumes on ethnographic profile of tribes of India. And the title of the books will be Ethnograph Ethnographic Profile of Tribes of Andhra Pradesh, Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, like this. And we may entitle the chapters as uh, uh, End Tribe, Continuity and Change, so that we can show the continuity and the change what has happened after independence. And this project needs a constant and continuous effort and it will take a few years to be completed. It is a very, um, I'm becoming very ambitious, but this project needs to be taken up. And if this can be materialized, believe me, it will be a wonderful work in anthropology and it will be a great contribution of Indian anthropologists towards anthropology and it will remain forever. And wherever there is, we, we can get funding, we can do video documentation of some tribes. And this work has already been done by some of the tribes, have been already covered by Anthropological Survey of India and Ministry of Culture and Tribal Research Institutes, but some more need to be done. And this ethnographic profile of all the tribes of India can only be possible under the umbrella of UIF. And now coming to the conclusion part, since UIF's all activities will be conducted on online platform, we need a lot of manpower having good technical knowledge. Whatever is possible on anyone's part, he or she should come forward. We need manpower, we need manpower for developing poster, for editing videos, for uploading information, brochures, photos, videos in the website, for writing proceedings of each webinar or meeting, coordinating and organizing such webinars in consultation with the governing body members. Now, my kind request to my fellow young anthropologists to volunteer themselves to take the different responsibilities of the UIF because this forum is for us, for our growth and for the growth of anthropology in India. And lastly, I'd conclude by saying that let's join our hands together. Let's be UIF, united, innovative, assiduous, awake, arise, and frontward for UIF. Thank you, UIF, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, everyone, for the presence hearing. Thank you, Dr. Nibetita, for a very, very inspiring talk. And uh, you have spelled out your vision in so many words, uh, which looks so achievable, which looks so achievable, will, which looks so nice. And I think uh, we needed a platform like this to come face to face headlong and uh, talk about things which are on our minds, but probably we have been shelving it for a better day. But there's no better day than this. And uh, thank you very much for, um, and as I said, helping us to pull up our socks, we need to do that. And uh, with that, I uh, will request our um, last speaker of the day, last but definitely not the least, a uh, young promising anthropologist, Dr. Silly Raut, uh, is working as assistant professor and head in the Department of Anthropology, Kalahandi University. And um, she herself will talk about her journey, her struggle, and the very word youth that she personifies in taking the cudgels and attacks which come to the field of anthropology from some other fields. So, uh, Dr. Rauth, I invite you to make your presentation, please. Uh, thank you, Gitika, madam, for your kind words. Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yes, yes, you are yes. audible. You are audible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're pretty hard. Thank you so much, Gitika, madam, for your kind words. A uh, very good evening and uh, namaskar to all the respected teachers and my esteemed colleagues. Uh, we have entered uh, into a new year, uh, 2021, uh, with lots of hope and positivity. But the last year, 2020, taught us a uh, very hard living of life. And unfortunately, uh, we lost three of our great and renowned anthropologists of the country. They are Professor L.K. Mahapatra, Professor A.R.N. Srivastava, and very recently, we lost Professor Vinay Kumar Srivastava. Uh, though they are uh, physically not present with us, but their work will always live with us and will guide us 
uh, their outstanding contributions will definitely teach us to stand high as anthropologists. This webinar series is a fitting tribute to Professor Vinay Kumar Srivastava. His premature passing away is a great loss to India as well as to global anthropology. As an erudite scholar and a learned intellectual of highest distinction, Professor Srivastava will be ever remembered for his immense scholarly contribution to the world of social science in general and to the anthropology in particular. I am indeed thankful to the United Indian Anthropology Forum for trusting me and including my name in a, a name as a panelist in the present webinar. My thanks are due to my mentors, Professor K.K. Misra, Professor Deepak Behera, Professor A.B. Ota, Professor Salina Mehta, Professor Grigori, and others who have taught me to stand up and speak out what I normally believe. I value their encouragement and good wishes. Uh, before I say something on my vision and expectation, I uh, must share my experience of two new years uh, from 2019 when I joined uh, in this college uh, to 2020-21 and now when my college has been uh, upgraded to a university. During these two years, uh, my expectations are rather shattered before I realized uh, what was happening around me. Uh, the department I love, fight for, where uh, my students have lost every hope on the subject. And as uh, other teachers and students uh, comment that, you may choose anthropology if you are mad. Now, uh, even after my ceaseless effort, when I see that my university is determined not to upgrade the existing department uh, into a postgraduate department in Kalahandi University, in a, in a backward district like uh, Kalahandi, my expectations uh, uh, was sky high when I was appointed as the CDC director. Uh, I thought I, I could do something for my subject and for the university in general. But it was, uh, it was terribly disappointing for me when uh, neither the university nor the state government uh, considered uh, to all my efforts to strengthen anthropology in my university. When I'm talking on my vision, I can uh, recall that uh, Hindu published an uh, article on 21st November 2020 uh, saying how Professor L.K. Mahapatra had initiated a revolution in Odisha in uh, anthropological teaching and research uh, that had been a white man's field and how he was a builder of lasting institutions. The article was about how he was fighting and bringing about a revolution and could make anthropology as a subject of global interest uh, through his many impressive discourses. Although in Odisha, uh, uh, anthropology in Odisha had witnessed a new phase of development in his time. Uh, after a decade, Professor Jagannath Pati com uh, commented on a few works of the colonial ethnographers, naming them as white men's burden in his article, Colonial Ethnography of Kondo, White Men's Burden or Poli Political Expediency. The field, which was originally for the white colonial masters, is now turned to us and we should make use of the opportunities for the people we are proud of. Now we are more interested in hearing what a research person has to say in this new age of research. Uh, nearly all official, uh, non-governmental uh, and other academic do so, uh, but I feel uh, that the native voice in this is more relevant than others' voices. Uh, there is a need to strengthen autoethnography or emic perspective in this uh, in in our approach. Uh, this need more and more local people studying and critically examining what others say about them and their cultures. But it is very surprising and disheartening for Odisha 
which is still a, a paradise for anthropological research, many institutions uh, of higher learning are not keen to train students in anthropology at plus two or uh, undergraduate or postgraduate level. Therefore, uh, anthropology loses its credibility uh, here. I feel that uh, we are not following the footstep of our first generation of anthropologists. Uh, we believe that uh, teaching anthropology involves giving students uh, uh, the means to understand and uh, respect the variety of human experiences and to develop a, a critical perspective on their own society and uh, on current public policy and reform. In this respect, how would it, uh, it be if we are unable to teach them and help them to speak for themselves? I strongly believe that the uh, that properly trained native anthropologist should suggest the ways in which anthropology could be used to address current social, political, and economic issues relating to the downtrodden, marginalized, and suppressed, uh, suppressed section uh, of the society. I firmly believe it is the need of the hour for districts like Kalahandi and for the Kalahandi University to impact teaching and training in anthropology to students at all levels of education. So let us increase the power of anthropology and encourage more involvement by the local individuals and students to make it a useful science for them and their neighbors. Placing uh, people back at the center, anthropology enables local people to innovate, empower, and achieve social economic justice for themselves. Further, anthropology was historically associated uh, uh, with the study of exotic people and their cultures. It is now extends to contemporary issues uh, like social life in cities, uh, fashion and trains, uh, groups and companies, uh, commerce and business, and whatnot. Uh, if uh, it allow us to get as close as possible to the reality, to observe and understand practices and behaviors, thanks to the richness of ethnographic data, let the data and fields near us not go anywhere. Let the realm of social science be invaded more creatively and ob objectively by anthropology. However, I regret that uh, anthropologists do not celebrate the beauty of anthropology, uh, but lean towards other disciplines. As they say, women next door is beautiful than one's own wife. Anthropological theories and methods are freely borrowed by many disciplines without acknowledging their roots. Finally, I urge that the forum to proactively involve itself in strengthening and promoting anthropological teaching and research all over India. Let us uh, feel it before others make a hole in our sipping board or else we are going to land up in a sunken ship. The dawn of anthropology will remain as dusk there will be never a sun sign. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sili Raut. Uh, uh, I would say you have really raised a valid point here, very valid point here that it's important to go back to the grassroots and give importance to the native perspective. Uh, that is something which is very important, but sometimes we forget in the process of this journey, the emic perspective. And uh, you have in very polite terms uh, brought back the importance of the fact that uh, we need to be very secure and feel empowered and confident about who we are. As anthropologists, we tend to become very cowed down when the people from other disciplines try to take over. And sometimes in that process, there is this desperation to become somebody else looking up to the othering side rather than to have the confidence in our own unique aspects, our own, uh, uh, you know, forte. 
which anthropology can really really talk about so thank you very much for uh, bringing this up and um, highlighting this particular point and uh, uh, we have uh, taken the um, presentations of our very um, good presenters today who have made very uh, cross cutting themes come across this board today and uh, i would like to um, open the forum for uh, questions some questions and suggestions for after this enriching uh, debate and deliberation so can we have some uh, uh, questions um, for our presenters i have one question uh, i have one question you know everybody's been talking about uh, people you know enumerating the list of uh, the scholars uh, who have uh, come to anthropology from other subjects um, and i just wanted to you know share with you uh, about this interdisciplinary you know approach and uh, uh, professor shivasa went to sociology from anthropology he was has an msc he had an msc in physical anthropology and then went on because he wanted to broaden his horizon uh, and therefore uh, you know joined sociology in the school and then he did an mphil in chinese studies from the department of chinese and japanese studies and then went on to do you know um, of course a phd in social anthropology at cambridge uh and um, there uh, if you remember the last uh, meet that uh, that you had uh, declan quickly uh, was reminding all of us that there was nobody who could teach a, a course on the anthropology of uh, islam or of religion and it was a paid course you know and uh, some way of making some money and so uh, professor shivastav you know went on to do uh, and went on and taught that course on the anthropology of islam so here uh, you know i've been hearing all these bright uh, young scholars and i realized that all of them uh, somehow are using the interdisciplinary approach you know and they and many of them focus on what uh, professor shivasam loved most field work that is what he loved most and you know you didn't have to go out into the field to do field work you know into the jungle or to the tribal areas and i want to share with you that when my um, uh, my daughter got married uh, here was a professor shivastav sitting during the you know uh, the rituals with a diary and a pen and he wrote down every interaction that uh, the, the pandit had with uh, you know the bride and uh, the bride's parents and the groom's parents and all that and uh, later on you know he said he'll write uh, uh, a treatise on uh, marriage in a punjabi family and uh, then when uh, when my mother was in coma for uh, some while and uh, she stayed was staying with us and professor twasal looked after her at night and i uh, spent the day looking after her uh, you know he used to feed her through the rice tube and all that and uh, when uh, after all those months when she finally passed away and the priest came and told him uh, no 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 you are the son in law you are not supposed to uh, touch Uh, you know uh, the the body and uh, so he said what is this anomaly you know what about those who have only daughters then you know so he he was quite grieved and he was angry at the, this uh, you know anomaly between the the scriptural uh, scriptural uh, you know texts uh, rituals and uh, the and, and the reality and so he wrote an article on death in a punjabi family so he was field working all the time he was sort of in the field even when he was home he was in the field and so he saw not he observed and once he asked me what is the difference between seeing and observing um and i was at a loss so he said have you ever counted the steps to your sister's home upstairs 
I said, no, not really. He said, you must have climbed those steps more than a thousand times, up and down. And you never observed how many steps there were. So this, you know, it was in this way he used to explain research methods. He used to explain, you know, uh, uh, the difference between seeing and observing and participant observation and, uh, you know, and just uh, observation and uh, uh, then all these approaches, you know, to the study of anthropology and tree work methods. He would explain, them, you know, by taking examples from nearer home. So this is what I found in all the presentations today, that um, uh, it's not, uh, you know, we all mentioned field work, we mentioned, uh, and, but very few of uh, them mentioned uh, the theoretical approaches. You know, which anthropological theory have they, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, sort of appreciated most or have found uh, an affinity with and which they've used most in their research work. So uh, something, because theory was very close to Professor Schwarzer's heart also. If it was field work, it was research methods, it was also anthropological theory. Thank you, I'm sorry I took such a lot of time, but I wanted uh, you know, to express uh, his uh, passion and his ideas uh, through this forum. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure to so let's look forward to that. Thank you. Yeah. And I hope you'll join us. Sure. Thank you very much, Professor Kumkum Srivastava Anti, because you really uh, brought out those aspects of Professor Vinay Srivastava, which none of us actually would be knowing. It would only be coming from you. And uh, it just reminds me that the person and the anthropologists are not two different people. We are all the time in anthropology, and he stands as a leading example of that. Uh, uh, may I invite some, just a few more questions because I don't want to go and uh, cross the time that has been given to us. So if there are just one or two more questions, uh, they are welcome. Uh, may I, ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, of course, yes, sir. I think. Please. I'll, I'll, I'll take a couple of minutes. First sure, of sure. all, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, UIAF. Kumkumji, then the this, this evening's moderator, and all the panelists for the wonderful job they have done. Um, Professor Behra and Professor Gregory, you must have realized that this is a kind of eye opening, and this is for the first time we are listening to our budding anthropologist, the future of anthropology in this country. So I'm really, you know, highly elated by their views. Whether I like them or not, that's a different question altogether. Um, first of all, the, the points that were uh, that came up during this uh, webinar, I feel that some of these points should be taken as the themes of a seminar at some point of time or a webinar at some point of time. First of all, uh, somebody said that holism is a liability for anthropology. And, and I think we should discuss about this. Is really holism a liability? Some people may say yes. Some people may say no. There should be a wonderful debate on holism. Somebody said that we should take up science and technology studies along with anthropology. This is also we could organize another webinar on this. Uh, somebody said that I'm neither an optimist nor a pessimist. I'm a pragmatist. I think we can have a full session on this. What do we understand by pragmatism in anthropology and how to make it a reality? Uh, there are also some kind of frustrations by some of the young scholar, uh, young panelists. Uh, somebody said that uh, anthropology has lost its direction. It has lost its focus. It has lost its priorities. And for the last 100 years, it has never given, given us a theory or a concept. Don't you think that these points also are debatable? And then there should be a full webinar on these issues. Um, also, she said that there is no development anthropology which is taught in this country. There is no feminism which is taught in this country. There is uh, no, no course on conflict management and so on and so forth. Personally, I don't agree to many of these things. 
but then i think these are all debatable if you have younger scholars or younger teachers think that we are not doing them i think we should expose them where they are teaching i was teaching for more than uh, about four decades at the university of hyderabad and uh, we were dealing with some of these things but nobody talked about linguistic anthropology which is completely forgotten anyway so i i think these are all a kind of uh, uh, challenges before us and all these issues have been raised by our young teachers either they are research scholars or they are uh, assistant professors or associate professors we should take them very seriously and uh, subsequently we should organize full seminars or full webinars on these issues so that there will be discussion thread and bear and we should know where we stand thank you so much thank you very much professor mishra uh, for pointing this because we do need debates in order to uh, clear many things and then only the journey ahead will be more clear debates need to be entertained so thank you very much sir for pointing this out and uh, uh, do we have uh, if there are other questions uh, please uh, i request our members to come up with them um hello hello can i comment something i'm nk vaid from delhi yes sir uh, i'll uh, narrate one thing about this thing i have already sent him an uh, article for comment and for you beyond and for you and he said that i'm not going to comment i'm going to publish in our journal i don't know whether it is there or not ek decision mujhe unke bare mein batana hai ki upsc ne syllabus revise kiya and they included anthropology and international relations department of anthropology delhi also they decided and nobody was ready to take up professor i think asked when i can you do it he said yes he never said no to anything new and when he left department that paper was closed and that can be a uh, new chapter for the beginner a new paper a uh, new research can be about uh, the education farmer education is going to be something new and is going to last forever thank you thank you so your point is taken uh, i think uh, 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 may i know uh, anyone else uh, uh, professor Nita Mawar, ma'am, you are raising your hand. Yeah. You can yeah. please, yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have no question. I have such expressions today to see how talented our anthropologist colleagues are. I am impressed. I'm proud of each one has such a good vision, and we are very open to share their idea. It has been a treasure, really. Uh, at the age of 78 i realized how rich our scholars are i'm proud of all of you no question just my respectful regards and the way you have been conducting gitika wonderful coordination recognition and remembering each one's voice i'm sure this forum has created an avenue to come out with the talented people and this is the this is the first time unprecedented road and it's going to be very high uh, my respectful regards to all of them now the only thing is that as an organizer we have to keep a note from all the presentation some of the practical road map indeed because gitika deepak all of us know that there are many seminars and end of the seminar lot of recommendation and our life is full of recommendation but this forum will come with a recommendation and concrete some plan and i am committed to take some of the responsibility to meet the milestones and that will be our responsibility to listen encourage talent and implement it so my submission is implementation uh, 
for all five. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm impressed. So much treasure in our talented scholars. Really, it was great. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, your blessings and the blessings of elders in this forum are the most encouraging aspect for us to go ahead. And thank you so much for your kind words, sir. Uh, uh, Madam Nita Marwar. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Gisika, for giving me this opportunity. I joined in a little late because there was really a connectivity issue. There was today, for some reason, some lot of disturbance. But what I could see from the messages from the chat box, the sessions have been very lively. I could hear Dr. Nibedita session, which I found very lively in talk in terms of very progressive about the ideas to take anthropology on a major, different level altogether. From Dr. Kumkum also, we understood what had happened from the start. So it was a very good way to learn. I think now it is, you know, a very important aspect that she talked about was collaboration. I think anthropology needs to really develop ways how we could collaborate with different organizations because each one has their own strength. And anthropology strength must also be done to be recognized with others so that people know the importance of anthropology. So it should be in a very proactive manner how we push anthropology with other discipline. I come from an ICMR institute where, you know, we had to collaborate with medical researchers. So it was, uh, you know, to be equal at that level was a very tough engagement, but it can be done. Anthropologists are good at doing that. And we should find a place where anthropologists work equally at different levels with organizations, we established MOUs, I was reading a message where uh, anthropologist Dr. P.C. Joshi has already come up with a signing of an agreement with anthropologists with the ICCA, SSR, ICCR. So these kinds of things are going to pay way for a long way for anthropologists to be taken far. So I think this is something I want to reiterate because already young uh, scientists are having the, those ideas, we must push forward that. That was one. And other thing was about collab publications, how anthropological literature could be published to a wider sector. So one is by co collaborating, we could reach different spheres. That could be an important one, how we could do that. So these are my two points. But congratulations to all the presenters and the organizers. Of course, Dr. Beda has been organizing these webinars. It has been really wonderful. I am also a part of it. Thank you very much. Anytime you any need, uh, anyone needs any help, I am there to help out because having retired now, we have more time to help young researchers to push them in whatever way they could. Thank you Thank very you, much. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, Thank you so much. Um, Professor Behra, uh, I think we are running short of time. Or... Uh, we can we still invite some questions so please unmute your yeah so please unmute your mic uh, dr arbin sinha uh, oh yes to something yeah arbin ji Urban, no sound, no sound. No sound. Unmute yourself. <laughs> the great communication man is not able to communicate. Come on. I was, I was request. No, no, I was waiting for your command. I was waiting for the command from Salina. So I was no question. It's all appreciation because after so many years we hear the same voice and more concern. The only thing is that I would like the younger generation to go back to the archives also. I have on my device, which I passed today only, my friend to go to office and give me the email. And uh, Dimitri Simkin and Sultan have written a book on anthropology for the future. It was published in 1928. And copy was uh, given as a gift to me by Dimitri Hilton. 
because he helped me in organizing the special session on young anthropologists in the same time period. Vidyarthi, when he has written about the trends of anthropology in India and the trends of anthropology in the uh, world, what he said that development of the development of the in a space research organization and in space research organization contributing for the development of the country. So Dr. Vidyarthi has very specifically mentioned about it. He used the word space anthropology and he said, you know, all our conversation is development anthropology. I said anthropology of development. So that should be really retrieved. People should think about it. Where would we really sidetrack all these priorities areas? Because rightly said, Dada very clear, um, and Didley mentioned that we attend seminar, we organize seminar, we have recommendations, and all the recommendations should be synthesized, analyzed, and then put on track back if we can do it. That will be great contribution. That's all. Thank you all. I really enjoyed it. It's a, after 33 years of our contribution to anthropology, we are listening all these views. We at that time, I mean, we were all quote unquote young anthropology. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Professor Arvind Sinaji. Um, so, I think, uh, I, uh, uh, we should stop. Uh, maybe Professor uh, Salina met up because all along you see was uh, insisting that young scholar should give uh, should be given an opportunity, and uh, she must be very excited today. So we would like to listen from uh, Professor Salina Meta. I am not excited, but I am. Probably now we uh, as uh, you know, did, and we've talked about it so often uh, that the future is bright. Uh, so any negative comment that is coming is also an expect that these young scholars are. Doing. So I am at the moment not commenting. We have uh, three more sessions to go, and a lot many more things to talk about. I only want to add because I know Yogu makes those wonderful notes which he shares with us uh, later on of all that young people are saying and telling us to do. Uh, I heard a lot of uh, young researchers talk about autoethnography today. And uh, while we discuss autoethnography, there is also a challenge to colonial anthropology and what colonial anthropology did and to what. Um, Many of us probably in the beginning of our careers did, uh, you know, those who belong to our generation. So maybe you can also add that that we should in future uh, possibly have a seminar on autoethnography. And now that Kumkum is going to be an integral part of our forum, we must do one on history and anthropology because that's very, very important and very critical uh, to the understanding of anthropology without history. I don't think so. I'm going to really have a future because to go forward, we must pay attention to what has been written and what relationship we have. So history is not only what uh, history is historicity. So mm -hmm. the historicity that anthropologists must spend some time exploring. So those who were talking about ethnography today, uh, my concern uh, with them is that when they talk about ethnography, they should be decolonizing and really look uh, on it. A uh, very, very you know, dangerous trend that I see young people come up with is, unless you have foreign collaborators, you are not going to be heard. Please, it's a huge problem. Read Vinay's bar data. Oh, well, I did travel a lot, but Vinay has always said no. And anyone who has a need today in the world, it is he who probably never had a foreign collaborator. So look at the very collaboration, national collaboration for others. We have a lot to do, a lot to achieve in this country. Uh, maybe we have two more sessions and hopefully I'll be there with all of you. 
Thank you. Uh, Karina, I have uh, nobody spoke, you know, uh, we, they anthropologists have not really worked on uh, the anthropology of sound, of music, you know, musicology and all that. And uh, in fact, if you just, uh, you know, go to YouTube, uh, there is a, a lecture by uh, Professor Shivasa on the anthropology of Kavali. Yeah, this is the uh, uh, you know, Sufi Kathak Foundation, where he spoke on the anthropology of Kavali, and I spoke on the anthropology of sound, uh, you know, uh, the, the nuance of uh, what Kavali is and uh, where it comes from and all that. He spoke about the field work, you know, that he did on Kavals and Kavalis, and I spoke about the uh, the Kavali uh, in um, in the Dargas. So how it is it was different. So uh, uh, you know this uh, you can explore because it's on the YouTube. Our lectures are on the YouTube. Uh, so one point we have gone in a step further from uh, autoethnography, and um, I remember I had written to Professor Gitika Ranjan also to other yeah. ethnographers. I mean here in the country anthropologists because of the pandemic we are not able to study the community. So it's a self ethnography. Yes. And trust me, for the last seven months, I am writing everything that has changed within the family. And probably it will have, it will see light of the day, because self-ethnography in this particular situation or other situations also, that's very important. I mean, for, tell me, how many of us have really observed the community beyond our house or our neighbor? No. Yes, and there are references, not particularly naming self ethnography, but ethnography in the jail, ethnography in the industry. All these examples are there. Good collection of literature we have done it. Over. Thank you. Sir, I have just, uh, I think you'll get the recording from Sunita Reddy. Uh, she had started a course on uh, ethnography. And uh, I spoke on ethnography of a heritage site. I, yes, I uh, wrote on ethnography of the Kutub Minar. And I included, uh, yes. I to Professor Zahra the other day that ethnography is not confined to the con uh, traditional society. It is for the contemporary society and industrial society. Also. And I spoke about a, a monument. I spoke about a heritage site and how, uh, you know, if the Kutub Minar could speak to us, what would it have observed all these uh, hundreds of years? So that's what I spoke about, actually. Professor Gregory, Professor Gregory, would you kindly propose a word of thanks? Thank you, Professor Bagra. You are always an inspiration for all of us. Um, to continue from where Professor Dara left, again, once again, I thank uh, Professor Geetika Ranjan for very excellent coordination and moderation. And you have a very, I mean, summed up whatever the speakers had wanted to say, and it uh, brought out the, the core of the, the entire discourse uh, to the light. Thank you, uh, Professor Geetika Ranjan. Uh, I should start with. Um, Professor Kumkum Srivastav, whose presence is, in fact, we felt the presence of Professor uh, Vinay Kumar Srivastav in your presence. Uh, you have uh, very rightly pointed out and uh, reflected what Professor Srivastav stood for uh, in anthropology. And thank you very much, Madam, for you and your family members for uh, being present in the entire proceedings. And you are always an inspiration source for us, and we will depend on you. Um, our panelists, starting from Dr. Uh, it Sri, who emphasized on being human, the strength of anthropology. Uh, Dr. Kumar, uh, Prasanna Kumar Patra, who invited us not to be complacent and to become open-minded, identify new margins, widen the area of studies and going global. Dr. Sumagan Bandiyabadhyay, reflecting on the dialectic, dialectic discourse, 
balanced combination, enhancing credibility, taking up responsibility, hard work, not dictated by politics. Rashmi Pramanik to go beyond the field and to develop concepts and theories. The importance of internship, she emphasized. Dr. Nivedita Nath provided a clean roadmap for the forum, which we need to discuss and go ahead. And Dr. Sili Root emphasized uh, uh, and called for a proactive role and also emphasized on autoethnography. All the panelists did an excellent job and it was a new experience for all of us. We really enjoyed each and every one of you and your uh, vision will guide the forum for greater actions and in the action you will be the you will be in the forefront. Thank you very much all for all the panelists. I should also thank uh, the senior anthropologists who had been present here and uh, participated in the discussion. Uh, in the, starting from uh, Professor Kumkum Srivastava, Professor K K Mishra, Dr. Nai Bhatt, Professor Bhagwan Rai, Professor Mewar, Professor Arvind Sinha, and the presence of Professor P K Mishra, Professor Ota, Professor Joshi, Professor. Uh, Rash, uh, Rahim Man Mondal, Dr. Lamba, Professor Shalina Mehta, Dr. Sunita Reddy, Dr. Professor Venkat Rao, Professor Bhagavan Rai, Professor Nita Meva, Professor Ranju Hazini Sahu, and the volunteering of Dr. Uh, Samrita Panda to the technical team. I think it inspires the uh, uh, forum to go ahead with full strength. And we all, with united force, will make a, um, a turning point in the history of anthropology in the year of 100 years of anthropology. Thank you very much. And I should also thank, again, Professor Bhagra already thanked Dr. Nidum Sikta, who had night and day sat in the preparation of the posters. I had seen him working till 3 o'clock. Uh, 3.30 at night coming, I mean, after his work. I think it's very, I mean, meticulous uh, job he did. And with the people like Mithun, definitely we have high hope for the forum to go ahead. Thank you very much for Mithun and the technical team. Um, Suniti has coordinated the entire, uh, I mean, proceedings. Uh, with providing the link and so on, and other technical team, including Praveen. We, this is the first day of the webinar. We, we are looking forward for greater days to come in the coming days. Thank you very much.